Good afternoon. Started at 9 o'clock this morning. Everybody, I'm glad to see everybody uh, come with us. Um, as I get started here this afternoon, first of all, I want to thank uh, all of you for staying for, the, for this convention and the coverage that you, you do for all of us uh, with the LHSA and, and high school sports across our state. Um, I also want to uh, publicly thank our board president, Mr. Bruce Bundy, uh, and the job he did today in running what was a, uh, a long meeting. And it could very well have been a very a difficult meeting, but uh, a long agenda item meeting, if you will. Um, our legal counsel is Mr. Amy Lowe, who's our constitutional attorney, who took care of a lot of what we did today. And Mr. Mark Boyer, who's our, our full-time counsel as well, all had an important part of what we did. And all of our staff and, and, and all of the preparation for this, this convention takes a lot of work, a lot of time. I want to thank all the principals, athletic directors, parish athletic directors, coaches that were in the building, uh, as well as uh, we had a contingency of, of state school superintendents, uh, public school as well as, as diocese superintendents in the building as well as others. So a big, a big item agenda. We had numerous items, as you know. Uh, and, and coming out of it today, um, of the items that were passed by the executive, commission, uh, executive committee uh, under their authorities to do so, uh, don't have the exact numbers, but uh, I'm guessing close between 60 and 75 percent of those items were passed. Good discussion. The process was clean. Um, we'll not see another agenda that lengthy again. Uh, we took on a, a task of, of, uh, of working and trying to clean up the handbook that we have in place, uh, not only for items that were described, but also for anything we do under the authority of that, of that handbook, whether it be a constitutional or bylaw. So you've all seen that. So that was a large undertaking, and, and we made some really really good strides in, in doing that. So we were very pleased with that as well. Uh, we had uh, oh, almost 360 principals in the building day, with the potentially 404 or 5 that we have. Uh, it's a good number. We have had more in the building at one time, but uh, I think that the attendance was not only the principals, but everybody else was, that was there today, including media, um, uh, was very, very pleasing to see that. Uh, as I said in my opening, uh, not only here, but also in the area meetings last week, not many state associations have the process that, that Louisiana has for exercising what we did today. The area media communications, the abilities to have all the stakeholders in one facility like we did today, to have that ability to, um, to meet as a group, discuss, have dialogue, uh, and, and, and then vote. Uh, I would be remiss if I did not um, give uh, some uh, uh, Congratulations to Pageant, the company that we use that, uh, that does all the voting devices. Uh, that, could be, that could become a sticky issue if those aren't working appropriately. Uh, and I think we did have one glitch today with that, so it worked out, worked out well there. I think the timing is good. Uh, I've had a couple of people make suggestions to me that maybe the 20 seconds is too much time to give people a time to vote, so we can always make adjustments to that if, if necessary. But just once we get started in the convention, we can't speed it up. Once it's set, the computer's set, we can't change it. But that's, that's probably some minor logistical stuff that we can do. So with that said, I'll entertain any, uh, any questions, you specific questions about any specific items you may have. How disappointed are you that the split is still in place, and were you surprised by the vote? Uh, I'm not going to word the word disappointed because uh, Ed, you know, I've been here five years and we've had this conversation more than once on how how, how we could potentially fix this. Uh, I think that of, of the proposals that were there, uh, it seemed as though in the last three days and after having traveled the state last week, that the proposal that was submitted by a, a member principal, Mr. Byler, uh, had the best uh, best chance. Now. Uh, if you looked at the final results and people say, wait a minute, uh, you know, we had 52% or even more than half the population that wanted, wanted to, to pass that. Uh, the original split back in 2012-13, uh, at that time, it took a simple majority to pass any items, whether it be in the Constitution uh, and or the bylaws. Um, when, I, when I got here, one of the items that was, I was asked to address was potentially um, is that with the Constitution we should be two-thirds vote, and we surveyed, and, and nobody, when you across the nation, when you're discussing the Constitution, which is the cornerstone of your association or your businesses, um, use anything less than two-thirds vote, and I and I confirmly believe that, and it's also a part of that amendment that was made in 2015 upon my arrival was schools that didn't have the sport in which we may address would not have the abilities to vote it as well. 
So if you go back to the 2012-13 vote, if you look at the numbers of the simple majority, uh, there was a, about 90, 90 votes or so or thereabouts of schools that voted for that that didn't have football initially. So that was another part of that. So, so the amendment then uh, came back today to show that uh, we didn't have the two-thirds vote. I, I, tried, I was trying to do some quick math up on the stage, and I think we're 50, 51, 52 votes short of having potentially uh, the two-thirds the two vote. So um, I, 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 I spoke before. I think the Unified State Championships are, are a very important part very important part of what Louisiana has done and has done for a long time prior to the, the initial split in 2012-13. Um, but we have discussed it, we've discussed it, we've discussed it, and I'm to the point now where, um, you know, where do we go from here? And I think that's where we'll have to regroup and do so. We have stuff in place to revert back to that as we stand here today uh, with the championships, the number of championships that we have in, in our sports that are presently split. What I, my concern was at the end of this convention last year, which I addressed to the executive committee um, in April last year, was that what next? Are we going to split in all sports now? Are we going to have a complete divide in, in every sport? Um, why is it okay for certain sports and not other sports? All questions I've been asked was going to try to get past today. Um, I think there was some momentum, some things have happened between April until we got to where we were today. Um, and now, now we're looking at what, what next. Uh, there was a proposal now we've got to try to figure out how we're going to do some of the, the playoff structures. Like what was some of it was passed today. Didn't have the other count in front of me, but it looks like there might be some overlaps of when some championships are and when championships, uh, whether you select or non-select. We have to address all those issues uh, and take a look at it. But um, in the grand scheme of things, uh, the principals voted today uh, to, uh, to remain in the split format in the sports in which we had. And um, I'm hoping that it doesn't continue to split in other sports, but uh, it could very well could very well be one of the outcomes. You mentioned you're maybe 51, 52 votes away from getting two thirds. Do you? I, me and you spoke earlier this week, and you said this might be the last shot at ending the split. Do you, based on today, do you look at it and say, well, maybe we'll, let's keep working on this. Maybe we could get everything back together. Good question. First of all, Jeffrey, um, it depends on who you talk to. Number one, uh, I've had depending on where you are in the state, uh, how many times does the, the principals have to vote like they voted today that we're done with it. Um, and I think at this particular juncture, after what had transpired last year, was you know, when we talked about what happened on the floor, uh, the, it, we kind of got offline, kind of got off the rail, and we ended up where we are today, which caused some, some concern about people not knowing what they voted for. And, uh, and then that's when it later on found out, well, wow, we're not going to play the prep classic. And, and so I truly believe that today what was voted on will stay in place. And uh, I believe that uh, everyone today, which was one of our goals strategically out of this convention, even though we had a, a large number of items that we were discussing, I truly believe people left here today knowing what they passed. There's nobody, there's no conversations in the hallways. And what, what do we do? We had an amendment and, and then an amendment in not really knowing what they passed, I truly believe everybody left here today uh, very clear on what was passed and what the message was sent on what myself, my staff, and the executive committee now will be charged to do as we move forward, and that's uh, continue to work on the handbook, uh, implementing those items that were put in, setting the timelines and making sure that's communicated to administration of all the school administration or all the stakeholders what was done today. Tommy talked about, Tommy Bowler talked about maybe if they if you brought back the, the six A, the six classes seems to be, there's at least some momentum there. What, what, what do you think about looking at that proposal or having the executive committee look at that proposal even more to figure out if maybe there's a potential solution there? Well, with what we have in place now, classifications coming up, you know, will be, will be coming up in October. I mean, we're in that odd number of year, getting ready to start the, you know, start the process to, to reclassify. Um, there'll be a lot of dialogue, a lot of, a lot of conversations, because you have to understand that a lot of coaches had input, uh, not only in our survey that we did uh, in, in early summer, but also in, as Tommy mentioned today, not a lot, but there was, a, a, knowing Tommy, there was a, a nice variety of coaches and athletic directors from various classifications or divisions that, that had that conversation with them. Um, so it, it's, a, it's always an option when we look at that. Uh, but what we have now, when I go to classify, I'll classify with what we have in place as we see here today. And the next step we have to do is to make sure that what we stay with now, if that's what we have, we need to make sure that our Constitution reflects that. Is, it, is there any chance you heard the 
seems like there's a lot of uh, opposition in North Louisiana. Is there any way you can do a sectional <coughs> type thing? Is that ever a, a, a possibility? <coughs> I wish all of you would have the, uh, the, the, uh, the money, the availabilities, the abilities to travel with us so you could go from city to city with us, Ed, you're, you're native of Louisiana, and I'm not, but to, to visit these communities and to see how the, how the tenor changes depending upon where you are in the state and, and the conversations that you have. Um, I have not entertained anything with sections, um, uh, but at the end of the day, we have more smaller schools and we have larger schools and we're spread out all over the place and the dynamics are different um, and to get to where we are today it all came from smaller classifications um, but the conversation that we have in northern Louisiana uh, along I-20 um, until we get down come 49 back down into Alexandria to work our way to Lafayette, Baton Rouge, into New Orleans it changes. Uh, that's where I think I go back to what I said before, and I don't want to beat this up, but to have the process that we have to be able to get all of those individuals into one room to do what we did today is very unique, and, and, and I want to make sure that they embrace that, embrace that process. Not everybody, if you look at the numbers today, depending on what was passed, not, you know, it's kind of like, it kind of looks like our world right now, at least in the United States, you have 50% that are happy with it, 50% aren't, and that's kind of where we ended up today with the, with the vote on the potentially bringing everybody back together, including taking another swipe at it, as you and I, Ed, you and I, and Jeff, and others in this room have talked about, trying to take care of it in sport. Just take, just eliminate the split in baseball, or softball, or in football, just by doing it in sport in a different direction, just by not addressing the constitutional piece, but going back to just doing the sport, and, and that didn't get, that didn't pass either, so. Anybody else? Anything? Is it is it a little bit uh, one more thing? Is it a little bit disappointing to know that to know that you had more than fifty percent, but because the constitution was changed, you're still a long ways away. You think two thirds is I don't want to say it's an unreasonable bar, but it's a very high bar. That's disappointing only because if if everything was still the same, then that would have been the case today, but. The Constitution is our cornerstone, and, and, and if you have half the people that agree with half of the that you need to have at least that 66%, that if not more, that, that appreciate that document. And, and part of that selling point was that if we're going to make that change, and Ed, not, not you, but others said, Eddie, you know that you'll never get the split changed again if you go to two-thirds vote. You know your story, our state better than I, but I don't think people voted into two-thirds going away. Well, let's go two-thirds, let's do what Ed, Eddie's asking. And only those who have that sport, let's do that because then we'll never have, we'll, we'll never get a pass again. I don't think I don't think that was the case. I think it's just there's just an underlying an underlying angst between the select private select whatever the identification is and the public schools, and it's been been ruled for some time, and then it got derailed, and and uh, it's just not going to change till I see right now. Eddie, I apologize if you addressed this, but the proposals that passed a lot of the selects to have their own championship events mm -hmm. put together as a tournament, would that require you to acknowledge the LSA? Would you work with them? I mean, how would that work as far as where those select, the select schools would have their championship? I would work cooperatively with them, with those individuals. When you start talking about other organizations or, sub, or subgroups within organizations, it's a whole, it opens up a whole different, a whole different conversation, which I'm not prepared to talk about today. Um, but the individual, there's individuals with whom I see in that room that I've worked with on other projects with stuff that had, had nothing to do with select or non-select, just as professionals. And um, uh, we, we have it in writing, we know what we have to do, and uh, we'll try to work with them any way we can to make sure that those, uh, you know, that anything, uh, anything that they do, um, uh, they get some, some form of assistance from us. But um, the way that things were written uh, this year, uh, they really didn't want any help from us, just needed this, needed that, and that, and then we'll do our own thing. And and uh, until you've had a chance to do that, you don't realize until what, what's, but it's not just hosting another home football game or hosting another event. Now, there's a lot of work that goes into that. We have full-time staff that does that, and unless somebody in this room who can tell me differently, I think we put on uh, great championships and nice venues, and we'll continue to do so uh, regardless of who's coming to it or who's not coming to it. It's just a matter of coordinating those dates. I have to go back and check the calendar. I was looking at the calendars, but it looks like there's going to be some overlaps. There's going to be uh, some championships here, um, championships here, 
um, who's going to get the officials, who officials are going to go where, it becomes a lot of logistical pieces of that, especially when it comes to officials. Uh, if who's going to be assigned, where they're going to be assigned, is it more regional? Because in some of our sports, the regional piece doesn't work because you're tired of seeing the same officials, so we try to bring some other officials in. We crisscross the state, we budget for that. We crisscross the state to give people different looks at different crews, uh, if you will, if it's football or soccer, uh, baseball, whatever, basketball, which is coming up. So uh, it's going to be a coordination, I know that. We're going to have to work to try to get that done because at the end of the day, I said it before, I'll say it again, uh, I'm in the business for all the students in our state, regardless of what classification you are, regardless of where you're located in the state, regardless of what your school configuration is. Uh, and we've got to try to make this positive for everybody and, and let them know that that's what we're going to do as the LHSA. You know, you've been around this now for five years, this, will be your, this is in year five, mm -hmm. and you've been, in other you've been in other places and you've seen other things. Is it hard to reconcile, like you said, there's this underlying angst, I thought that was a good way to refer to it, between the public and private schools. Was that something that you maybe had hoped would, would change or, or, I mean, you know the difference, like you say, I, and I've been there too, or you've gone to the different places. How is this different than other areas, or do you even feel comfortable talking about that? Well, I, I feel comfortable talking about it, but let me address the first one first. Sure. When, when, when I took the position, I was given, here's what we need to do to, to do a poly help. Um, Number, number one, enforce the rules. Is there anybody in this room that wants to argue with me that I haven't enforced the rules or the staff that I have prepared has not enforced the rules as written to the, the angst of some because they're written because it doesn't give you much room. Some of those that have shall, you shall do this. Right. Okay? Um, and we've done that. Um, it's not fair we have schools that have open parish or open boundaries or open enrollment. We need to have attendance zones. Well, that's what we have now. We have applicable attendance zones in every parish across the state. So, so we've done that. Okay. So, would you address the, um, would you address the uh, seventh and eighth grade issue? Everything that you saw today, that was shot down in regards to uh, JV participation, seventh, eighth, and ninth grade participation. Uh, the uh, not if you're outside your boundary, you can't participate. All of those items that we put up were items that we felt that were items that were bones of contention on why individuals had or, or was perceived to have an advantage to get students. The same with Act 465. That we, we picked everything out that we've got over the course of time that says, well, if this was fixed, if, 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 if they weren't great. It's a recruiting tool. If you take that out and you take this out, and it's public or private, it wasn't. There was no no designation there that it would probably help. So we we checked all those boxes off. Uh, but it seems like whenever we do that, then we come back. There's something else. Well, what is that something else now? Well, if you look at who got up and stood and spoke against the seventh, eighth, or in favor of trying to us take out the put the seventh, eighth, and participation back in with the JV or junior varsity ability outside, were private schools and the small classification schools that, that survive using those kids. Why aren't we a 7 through 12 association? If we're gonna if we're gonna have middle school kids for some of our state and 2A, 1A, I was passed with them, but 2A, 1A, B, and C, why can't all schools use seventh and eighth graders? Not all schools need the seventh and eighth graders. But if we're gonna use the seventh and eighth graders, then why don't we count every seventh and eighth grader you may have? You may have a uh, 100, uh, 100 seventh graders, 50 boys, 50 girls, and, and, and 100 eighth graders, 50 and 50. That's an extra 200 students that you should have to add to your overall number for classification purposes. Well, if you do that, some schools change, we've changed classifications, private or public, uh, and we have, in our present, set of present configuration, we have schools that have fewer students maybe two times less as many students in their school that are 1A, but they're 1A because they want to play football, or they're B and C, they may have 200, 300 students in their school where the, the 1A school does not. So that was kind of what Tommy had talked about, passing schools, you know, driving past five 1A schools to drive two hours to get to a mid midweek game to play somebody who's a B or C. So all of that stuff was looked at. So now you get back to the underlying problem. So we've done what people have asked us to do. I truly believe that. And, and, we've, and, and the fine figures sh show that. The number of investigations that we've done shows that. And I think it was a proposal today that, which was passed earlier by Constitution is there's take more of a consequence on coaches if there's an undue influence than, than the penalty on the student. 
which I'm glad passed because I would have solved some of the issues we had a year ago in an incident uh, in the uh, in the 985 and 504 area codes last year. We could it would have helped, okay, but. We applied the rule the way it was written, and the athlete took the brunt of that. So a lot of the things that transpired that we've been asked to do, we've done that. And uh, it, what next? Well, the bottom line is that that's all good. We checked all those boxes off, but it looks like that there's not going to be a there's not going to be a, a simple solution or a solution at all, simple or not, uh, to where we sit when it comes to select and non-select. And I think the next decision or conversation we're going to have is clearing up the identification now or adjusting identification of what really select means uh, and, and what private school means by definition potentially the Department of Education is there, is there a true definition cleaning that piece up because I truly believe that as we move forward I think it's just going to continue to splinter and splinter and splinter to where we potentially have everything spared in all sports. Thank you. Separate Thank you.